Hello, everybody. Good afternoon or good evening. Welcome to Buenos Aires, at least virtually. And welcome to the 2021 edition of the MCA Awards Ceremony. This is part of the third Mathematical Congress of the, America, of the Americas. This is Constanza Sanchez Fernandez de la Vega. I am Daniel Carando. And we will be happy to be, uh, to be serving as uh, presenters of this ceremony. Hello, everybody. Today, July the 9th, we celebrate our Independence Day in Argentina. The commemoration of this Independence Day is a tradition shared by all the countries of Am the Americas. So it is a great pleasure for us that this award ceremony, one of the most joyful events in the MCA, takes place on this special day. As you know, back in 2017, it was decided that this event would physically take place this year in Buenos Aires. But the current circumstances force us to move to a fully online mode. MCA has 37 sessions that will be starting next Monday, July the 12th. The plenary activities will start the following Monday, July 19th. And they include six plenary and 21 invited talks and the gender roundtable. We are currently in the joint seminar room of the Mathematical Department and the Santa Law Research Institute, both belonging to the School of Sciences of the Universidad de Buenos Aires. From here, we'll be presenting the awards and the awardees. As a headline, there are five MCA awards, two Solomon Lefschetz medals, and one America's Prize. But before we announce the, award, the awards, we will first hear a few words from Professor Friedlander. Susan Friedlander is one of the founders of the Mathematical Council of the Americas, and she is a member of the Executive Committee. So, let's listen to her. Hello, and welcome to the prize ceremony of the 2021 Mathematical Congress of the Americas. I am Susan Friedlander, the chair of the Executive Committee of the Mathematical Council of the Americas. The full program of MCA 2021 will start in a few weeks, and we are all very excited. To build, uh, to build up the momentum and to honor our stellar prize winners, we are holding this ceremony now to announce the names of the winners. There will be a short video by distinguished experts in the field, giving the laudation for the achievements of each of the MCA prize winners. Please enjoy the celebrations and I now hand over the ceremony to our friends in Buenos Aires. We thank Professor Friedlander for her words. The five MCA prizes are awarded to mathematicians who are no more than 12 years past their PhD at the date of the Congress. Eligibility for consideration of nominees requires that they either receive their graduate, graduate education or that they currently hold the position in one or more countries in the Americas. The winners are invited to give a lecture on their work at the Congress. The first prize we have the honor to announce today goes to Dr. Jacob Zimmerman. Dr. Zimmerman obtained his PhD on 2011 from Princeton University and he's currently an associate professor at the University of Toronto. Next, we will hear a presentation by Professor Javad Masregui. After that, we will communicate with Alex. Mesdames et messieurs, distingués invités, chers collègues, je me présente Javad Masregui, président de la Société mathématique du Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, respected invitees, dear colleagues of MCA, I'm Javad Mishrigi, <coughs> president of the Canadian Mathematical Society. I am very delighted to present Professor Jacob Simonman from the University of Toronto for the MCA prize. <coughs> Simonman is an outstanding young mathematician whose work at the interferes of transcendence theory, analytic number theory, and arithmetic geometry is remarkable for its creativity and insight. Just 32 years old 
and nine years beyond his PhD, written under the supervision of Peter Sarnak from Princeton University. Simonman is already an extraordinary master of all three areas of mathematics. One branch of his work is on the under ort conjecture at the intersection of diophantic geometry and the arithmetic of automorphic forms. It concerns Shimura varieties, which are of long standing and increasing importance in these areas. In a recent breakthrough, Simonman provided a complete proof of under ort conjecture for the moduli spaces of principally polarized abelian varieties in full generality. A crucial ingredient in is a certain lower bound for Galva orbits for spatial points in arbitrary dimension, building on result of Andretta, Goren, Howard, Madapusi Pera, and Yuan Zhang. Simonman had the brilliant insight to use a weighted average version of a conjecture of coldness to get the required lower bound for Galois orbits. In his work with Pila, Jakub proved a series of increasing powerful transcendence results, culminating in a proof with Baker on X Shanuel for Hodge structures. This fundamental result has important application to Diophanti problems, which has been confirmed by recent groundbreaking work of Lawrence and Venkatesh on integer point in high dimensional varieties. Simonman has made major contributions to many other fundamental problems. Already as a graduate student, he collaborated with Fields medalists, Margawa and Shankar to determine the second term in the asymptotic formula for the number of cubic fields with bounded discriminant. Jakub has recently been interested in a fundamental problem to count in an asymptotic sense the number of curves over a finite field of genus G as G goes to infinity. The situation is particularly intriguing because there is no clear consensus of whatsoever the answer should be. In collaboration with Michael Lipnowski, Jakub has answered the similar question for principally polarized abelian varieties. Surprisingly enough, he found that there are many more principally polarized varieties than previously expected. That has many statistically counterintuitive implications. In his work with Bhargava, Shankar, Taniguchi, Thorne, and Jiang, Simonman has obtained new bounds for the two torsion in class groups of number fields of any degree, already a new result for cubic fields. This has many profound consequences in arithmetic. Simonman has many more first rate contributions spanning number theory, algebraic geometry, logic, and analysis. His breadth, creativity, place him among the world leaders in his generation. In 2015, Simonman was awarded both a Sloan Fellowship and Sastra Ramanujan Prize. This is for far-reaching contribution by a mathematician at age at most 32 years old to areas influenced by Ramanujan in his short life of 32 years. The impact of Jakub's work has since been confirmed by many awards, including Ribbon Boyne Prize in Number Theory in 2016, the Andre Eisenstadt Prize of Centre Recherche de Mathematique 2017, the Coxeter James Prize of the Canadian Mathematical Society in 2019, and an invited lecture at the International Congress of Mathematics in 2018. His remarkable work today suggests that the promise of even greater achievement in the years ahead and make him the true recipient of the MCA prize. Thank you for your attention. We thank Professor Jabad Masregi for his presentation on Jacob Simerman 
outstanding and creative results and his many achievements. Now we will contact our first awardee, Jacob Zimmerman. So, hi Jacob, <laughs> how are you? Uh, welcome to this uh, virtual ceremony and congratulations. Great. Uh, can you hear me now? Everything? Okay. Um, thank you so much. It's a, it's a huge honor to receive this prize. Thank you to the Mathematical Council of the Americas for organizing this Congress. Um, I regret, I'm sure, as do many others, to not be able to attend in person um, in Buenos Aires, but uh, I look forward to attending in person in the future Congress. Uh, hopefully things will be a little bit better. Um, I just also want to thank um, my advisor, Peter Sarnak, for introducing me to mathematics and uh, everything that I, I do now basically is an outgrowth of what he taught me. And of course, mathematics is very much a collaborative um, venture. So I want to thank all my colleagues. This prize is definitely shared with them. Um, I don't want to name them all, but in particular, uh, Jonathan Pila, Ruhl Shankar, and Ben Baker, who have been great friends and mentors um, throughout the years who I look forward to working with um, again in the future. So thank you very much for the award. I look forward to attending all the wonderful uh, lectures to come. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jacob, for your beautiful words. And now we announce the next winner, which is Amy Murphy. Dr. Murphy obtained her PhD in 2012 from Stanford University. She is currently an associate professor at Northwestern University in, in Evanston, USA. Next, we will hear a presentation by Professor Helmut Hofer, and after that, we will try to communicate with Emmy. Let me first congratulate Emmy for receiving the prize of the 2021 Mathematical Congress of the Americas. Emmy Murphy is a geometer of highest caliber and her work in contact and symplectic geometry has profoundly impacted the development of the field. Emmy has shown exceptional taste in picking her problems and ingenuity in solving them. In symplectic and contact geometry, there's an important uh, dichotomy. Namely, we have this class of problems which we consider rigid, and we have this class of problems which looks more flexible. And as it turns out in symplectic geometry, there's not much room in between these two groups. And due to Emmy's results, the room between them is even much smaller than we thought. Now the rigid side is connected with a pseudo-holomorphic curve theory and pseudo-holomorphic curve theory can be used to define gomma witten theory, Fleur homology, symplectic homology and symplectic field theory. And these kinds of theories can be used to formulate obstructions and study their properties. And if you ask a geometric question, does a certain ob object exist with certain given properties, then the obstructions might say, no, we cannot have such an object, or maybe there's no obstruction. Now, a similar situation arises in other fields in geometry, but what is special in symplectic geometry is if there is no obstruction, very often you can actually construct such an object. And that is what I meant by referring there's little room between them. And these constructions are very often of the kind what is called H principle. So let's talk a little bit more about this flexible side, the H principles. In geometry, very often an object can be defined by a map which has certain properties, and these properties are very often encodable in requiring that the map satisfies a differential equation or uh, differential inequalities or more general differential relations. Now, it's a, it is another fact of life that this kind of differential relations, which occur in geometry, have the property that one can associate to them an easier problem, namely we replace in this expressions involving the partial derivatives, um, 
we replace the partial derivatives by introducing new independent variables, <coughs> and we obtain some more algebraic looking uh, equation or relation. And if this relation can be solved, then one can in fact solve the differential equation. And if that is indeed true, we say an H principle is associated to the question which we just considered. One of Murphy's contributions is an H principle for a new class of Legendrian embeddings, which co are called Lewis Legendrian embeddings. And this was wonderful mathematics, very deep, but it also had on top of it, uh, psychological importance. It was very unexpected and it pointed to a wonderful green pastures of unexpected flexible phenomena in symplectic and contact geometry. And it started a huge activity. And in fact, it turned out there were other very interesting H principles. To give you an idea about the H, H principle in uh, symplectic geometry and uh, contact geometry, I will explain a classification result by Bormann, Elias, Brack, and Murphy for so-called overtwisted context structures. When I talk about a context structure, I have an underlying manifold of odd dimension, and I have a hyperplane field distribution in the following. I just talked about a plane distribution in the, in the tangent bundle, <coughs> which is maximally non-integral. And also, I will always assume that they are co-oriented, which implies that the underlying manifold has to be oriented as well. So given um, two such context structures on the same manifold, we would like to understand under which conditions can I homotop the first into the second through context structures. There's an obvious necessary condition because I can just forget about the non-integrability assumption and I have a homotop, a homotopy of the first plane field to the second through plane fields. And in fact, it turns out in context structures, when you talk about plane fields, we actually uh, talk about, um, because there is an underlying uh, uh, complex structure on the bundles in the background, we, we mean homotopies of complex vector bundles. Now, given two context structures, clearly, if they can be connected by context structures, they have to be, uh, one has to be able to connect them by plane fields, but uh, that is in general not enough to guarantee that they are actually connected by uh, context structures. However, there is a large class of context structures called overtwisted context structures for which this in fact is true. In order to explain this, let's first look at context structures on the three-dimensional Euclidean space. So if this here is a z-axis, we have the xy plane and the translate of this, and think of the planes being attached along the z-axis. Now, in order to, ex to build out of this a non-integrable plane field distribution, I have to start rotating when I go radially out from the z-axis. And if I take the plane higher up on the z-axis, I have precisely to do the same thing. That's the best I can do to achieve maximal non-integrability. But I only have to twist a little bit. And uh, that what we get is called the standard context structure on R3 and up to diffeomorphism, that thing is unique. Of course, nothing prevents me by going to infinity, rotate infinitely often. And what I get is the so-called overtwisted context structure on R3. And the following, is true. I can always embed the standard one into the overtwisted one in such a way that the tangent map of the embedding maps contact for contact planes to contact planes, but I cannot embed the overtwisted one into the standard one. So these are two different things which are not diffeomorphic in this category of contact structures. Now there is a standard procedure. If I have a context structure on R3, I can construct one on R5 and the standard procedure applied again on R7 and so on and so on. And if I apply this to the standard structure in R3, I get what is called the standard structure on R5, R7, R9, 11 and so on. And 
if I apply this to the overtwisted one, let's call it the overtwisted structure on R3, R5, R7, and so on. Now, let's consider now um, a closed, connected, or dimension manifold having a context, a co oriented context structure. And we say it's over twisted, provided I can embed the R to N plus one of the same dimension into it by contact embedding. So now the important result by Bormann, Eliasberg, and Murphy is the following. If I have two contact structures on the same connected M, and they're over twisted in the sense that I have contact embeddings of that over twisted model, then if the plane, if the contact structure as plane fields can be connected by plane fields, then you actually find a connection from one to the other by over twisted contact structures. This is a very deep result. It generalizes a result by Liasberg from 89, and it took more than 25 years to find this generalization because it turned out to be extraordinarily difficult. So again, my heartfelt congratulations to Emmy Murphy for this well-deserved honor receiving the prize of this Congress. Um, yeah, it's a well-deserved Emmy made fantastic contributions to mathematics and congratulations again. We thank Professor Hofer for his detailed presentation on the deep and fantastic contributions to mathematics from Emmy. So Emmy, hello, how are you? We are very happy to have you here with us today. So if you are ready, we would love to hear some words from you. Go ahead. Uh, hi, hi. Um, hopefully uh, everyone can hear me. Um, yeah, uh, I just want to say, first of all, thank you uh, so much for this. It's quite an honor. Um, thank you in particular to the uh, MCA uh, and their selection committee. And thank you very much to Helmut for uh, the very nice uh, introduction and the uh, description of the work. Um, yeah, uh, really the most uh, important people to thank, I would say first and foremost are uh, my colleagues. Um, of course, uh, you know, this is collaborators, but also just like many people who I'm, I'm scared to name anyone and for fear of leaving someone out, but, uh, you know, for, um, uh, I think for a lot of the things that I get credit for, a lot of it is actually due to the work of my collaborators. So uh, <laughs> certainly couldn't do anything without them. And uh, besides that, I just wanted to thank uh, the people in my life, um, you know, family, friends, my wonderful partner, Sam. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, who really gave me so much support. So thank you again. Next, we will hear a presentation by Professor Alejandro Mas. After that, we will communicate with Daniel. Good afternoon, everybody. It is a real pleasure for me to be here to introduce Daniel Remenik thesis in, in, in this uh, ceremony. Daniel Remenik is an exceptional researcher and his career had been exceptional like him during which he has led one of the most challenging research programs in probability theory of this century, namely to understand the KPZ universality class. I will describe a little bit his results later. His leadership in this subject has allowed him to achieve recognition around the world for his remarkable results to build capabilities to empower leaders in the upcoming generation of probabilists and to innovate in the formulation of new problems and their solutions 
in the various fields in which he has worked. Sorry, just for reading this uh, sentence, but for us, this is maybe the main quality of Daniel. And that is why we present him to this prize. He's not only a great mathematician, but he has only been a great leader in producing new mathematicians, PhD students and master students that now are working in remarkable problems with remarkable results too. So let's go to his background and his training in mathematics. Daniel first steps were developed in, in the Department of Mathematics and Engineering at the University of Chile, where he graduated as a mathematical engineer in 2004. There he produced his first results. He wrote a kind of master thesis in probability supervised by Jaime San Martin. And he produced very nice results in potential theory. In parallel, he was involved in some projects relating probability dynamical systems and biology where he also produced some very nice results and he was a key actor in such works. So Daniel started to be a researcher very early in his career. I remember Jaime San Martin telling me when Daniel finished his master thesis about the quality of his results. Due to that, he received in 2005, the main prize for the students of an engineering school in Chile given by Instituto de Ingenieros de Chile, it's called Marcos Orrego Puelma Prize. Of course, he was the best student of his promotion by far. Then he moved to, to US where he, he was student at Cornell University and supervised by Rick Dury during his PhD. Also, this period in his career was very important. I will, I will come back to that later, but he produced a lot of results and this was the base of the technicalities and, and, and the, the capacity of, of Daniel to be part of very challenging mathematical problems. After his PhD, he moved to, to Toronto where he was a Fields Ontario postdoctoral fellow and he worked with uh, Jeremy Quastel in one of his main famous uh, results, the KPZ fixed point uh, result. Of course, not only during his postdoctoral position, but after that and since the last uh, many years. So finishing his postdoc, he came back to Chile and he started to be a professor at the Department of Mathematics Engineering and a researcher, very key researcher of the Mathematical Center for Mathematical Modeling also at the University of Chile where he he started to be the, the leader of the data science group to introduce mathematics to data and, and to be part of this new era of, of data, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So, so the, the, the career of, of Daniel that looks quite linear, in fact, is far from being linear, is, is, is filled by many, many mathematical ideas, but also by the, by the braveness of, of uh, Daniel to go into complex problem, either in the very applied side of mathematics or more theoretical side. So, so his career is rich and the richness of his career, in fact, is uh, maybe one, one of, of the main ingredients that are in the base of the very, very good results uh, that he is able to produce. So what happened in his, in his PhD thesis, and, and, and I wrote many sentences that were produced by his uh, advisor, Rick Duret. In fact, first I have to say that, that his thesis was very rich in content, in problems. So in particular, he worked in contact processes in a random environment. He, he, he worked in some stochastic process coming from finance. He worked in, in stochastic process coming from epidemics that today are so important. And he also worked in problems coming from statistical physics. In, in all of such problems, Daniel shown all his abilities to, to solve and go into very deep and complicated uh, situations, mathematical situations. Uh, there are many sentences that, that Rick uh, 
wrote in the letter that to present Daniel to this prize that I, I wanted to share with you, but essentially they said that uh, to discuss first with, with uh, Daniel was always a pleasure. To discuss with Daniel is always a pleasure, but also since he was a student, from the beginning, he was a real uh, mature colleague to discuss. So he was able to go into complicated problems, producing very, very uh, original solutions. In fact, going into stating deep, deep relations with other areas and also, of course, uh, looking to the techniques coming from analysis, from probability, and from many other uh, subjects. So in particular, this last problem that I, I wrote here, so it was a very complicated problem where Rick, of course, he said that, uh, of course, when you have a very good student and you discuss with him and they come with problems, or you propose some problems, many times, you say, okay, do we have a challenge for him? In fact, nothing was a challenge or was a challenge, but he was able to solve them. So this that problem in the words of Rick uh, essentially illustrate what Daniel is and what Daniel started to be when he was a PhD student. But let's go in this five, 10 minutes I have very fast to what is maybe one of the main challenge where Daniel has been working in the last eight, 10 years, uh, that is the KPZ uh, project. KPZ because a model of stochastic equations called cardar paris design equation. Since I'm not a specialist, I, 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 I read a lot for the presentation of Daniel and also for this presentation. And in fact, maybe this is the model I, I, I like the most, maybe because I can understand it. But essentially, suppose that you, you have you know, here in down in this in this picture, yes, you have a, you have the integers or the reals, and you have some particles falling down in, in these pictures in lines, yes, with some stochastic rule. And, and by these dynamics, so you start to 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 arrive to the bottom side of the picture and you start to produce this structure. Yes, uh, let's say these columns or structures that uh, are showing some special boundaries here. Yes, uh, I am not giving the complete uh, information, but essentially here you can look, the particles are part, linear particles that go down and they just stick one over the other producing columns. But in fact, if you want to uh, change a little bit the, the, the problem, make it more, complicated, you can allow the particles also to stick to other particles when they are very close and they are falling and not just when they are when they touch another particle that is in the top of a, of a column. Yes. So essentially, you have this kind of, of stochastic models, uh, such particles, this is one, one dimensional, and you, and you want to understand essentially the fluctuations of, of this boundary or essentially to study the stochastic processes given by the by the height of this uh, of this big tower here, yes, where you have, of course, very strange boundary. This picture here is for sticky sticky pieces going down or falling down. Yes, so you want to understand this and this phenomena here, these moving boundaries and the fluctuation of these moving boundaries are really a challenge in many many topics. Yes, for many years. Of course, this, this uh, challenge is, appears in physics, in chemistry, in biology. Uh, and you can even uh, experiment yourself to see this phenomena when you take a cup of coffee uh, as a good mathematician. Yeah? So I experiment that. And essentially, these kind of pictures appear, for example, when you evaporate or, or you finish your cup of coffee and the particles of coffee are glue maybe to the, to the boundaries of or your cup. And, and the evaporation of the liquid produce kind of pictures like this. Yes. Uh, so of course, this, those pictures looks much like those here. Yeah, this, this, this model here essentially is the model of sticky particles of coffee coming here. In fact, some physicists remark that 
if the particles are uh, perfect spheres, in fact, you will produce this uh, a model with particles going down like columns, but when you deform a little bit the particles, you, you will get the pictures that I'm showing now. Hmm? So as I said, I did my own experiment because I was so excited with the KP set. And maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe this is the picture that you can get and, and the picture you want to understand. You know, this is part of many, many problems in physics and statistical mechanics, in, in biology and chemistry, where you, you really don't have a good analytical answers. And, and this program so was look for more than 20, 30 years for many people to really understand this boundary and produce the correct models that describe it. Uh, so as I said before, this class is a broad collection of models, probabilistic models. So it's not a unique model. There are many models uh, appearing in many fields like mathematical physics, physics, one dimensional interface, random growth of one dimensional interface, direct random polymers, particle system, stochastic PDEs, and all of them share kind of behavior that I illustrate here in red, that the fluctuations of the boundary are, goes like T to the one third in time and T to the two third in, in space with some, of course, more information about the, the correlation. So you have this kind of special kind of models where, uh, there was a convincement, some experiments, some theorems that uh, that proved that this class, or there is a class that was called KPZ universality class, were the same behavior in the limits by taking this uh, uh, this special growth uh, uh, may happen. Yeah, so this this is this is a, a subject has been considered by many 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 very good probability for many years. And, and, and this is the challenge that Daniel accepted to be part. So what is the main achievement? Uh, the main achievement here was to really construct the, ob the object called the KP set fixed point. In simple words, this kind of limit of the distributions when you scale the time and the space as I showed before, is yes, to show that there exists this object and what is the shape of this object? What is this object? Yes. Even if today we cannot describe the complete KPZ universality class, so those models, probabilistic models that will go to the KPZ fixed point, the KPZ fixed point was, they, they arrived to, to describe completely. But not only that, they are right to describe the KP set fixed point and prove and demonstrate many of the conjectures that were proposed for this object. Yes, symmetries, regularity in time, space, ergodicity, the case of tail. So they really understood the model. And this is a real breakthrough in mathematics, in probability theory. And I'm sure that will mark many, many generations trying to go deeper in such uh, objects and theories and, and problematics coming from nature. Uh, just to, 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 to justify my sentence, in fact, uh, the KPZ fixed point plays really an analogous role in this class to that of the normal distribution of Brownian motion in many other models, yes? And, and so the KPZ fixed point is really a theorem that marked the history of probability in my opinion like many other results, but of course, this is one of those results that we will remember and use for many years. And today, in fact, there, the, the theorem is not the unique theorem by Daniel. There are many others. There's a collection of results that, that came after this result that are stating very, very amazing uh, uh, relations between this KP set fixed point and, and, and partial differential equation, in particular, uh, the distributions that, or, uh, that they are looking in the theory are well-known dispersive PDE equations, yes? Uh, of course, this is not the unique relation. The, there are many other relations with model distribution from random matrices, et cetera. So what I want to say here that uh, the results and the program developed by 
Daniel and his collaborators, it's a great program and his results deserve this prize and of course uh, a lot of attention in the future. And this is not a coincidence, in fact, this result and many others also uh, allow Daniel to be elected as a young member of the Chilean Academy of Science uh, two years ago. Today we are celebrating the, his um, Mathematical Council for the Americas Prize 2021 and, and he has been awarded also this year with the Rollo Davison Prize for the best probabilities of his age at the University of Cambridge. So, so it's not a surprise, Daniel uh, deserved by his abilities, mathematical abilities, but his personal also way to see mathematics by his leadership in producing students, by his volunteer to go also, also into very applied parts of mathematics and produce results in, in, in society or use mathematics in society deserve this prize. And I really congratulate him. Uh, thank you very much, Daniel, for your results. Thank you, everybody. We are really proud of all what you have done uh, in mathematics. We thank Professor Alejandro Mas for his sort of presentation of Daniel Remenick's great career and his impressive achievements. And now we will present the awardee. Hola Daniel, bienvenido y felicitaciones. Welcome to this edition of the MCA Awards. Congratulations and thank you for being here. We would like to hear some words from you, so as soon as you're ready, please go ahead. Um, I guess you can hear me. Good. So I would like to start by thanking uh, the Mathematical Council of the Americas. It's really an honor and I'm humbled to be part of uh, this distinguished list uh, and, and for the committee to have uh, honored my work. I, I also want to thank Alejandro for his work and actually for a lot more. He's always uh, been very supportive of, of my work and, and of my career. I know him since, since I was a student at Universidad de Chile. As he, as he told, I, I was a student at Universidad de Chile. I had the, the luck of getting a very strong education there. And, and that's where I started being motivated and, and, and inspired to do that and to do a PhD and to pursue his work. So I, ha I have the fortune now to be uh, a professor there and, and to sort of have as colleagues who uh, the those who were my teachers at the time so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that I'm also uh, I, I'm honored to in a way be representing Chilean mathematics here I think there's a lot of very good mathematics being done in Chile and in Latin America so it's really an honor um, for me to to in a way be part of that um, well I the, I, I'm also lucky, I think, uh, because I somehow found a, a good problem and a good area to work in. Uh, so as I think Jacob and maybe Amy was saying, were saying before, uh, math is a collaborative uh, enterprise. And somehow I, I, I think I had the lack of falling into, a, into an area which is very lively, very interesting, and has connections with uh, physics, with probability, with other areas of, of math. Uh, so in, in that sense, I'm, 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 I wanted to thank my colleagues, uh, my collaborators. I, I started working on this quite a few years ago while I was a postdoc in Toronto. And we started a program essentially without really knowing exactly what, where we would go with Jeremy Costell, who has been my main collaborator for several years. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm really grateful to, to my collaborators and to everybody in the field for making it such a, such a nice uh, subject to work on. And, to finish, uh, I want to just thank my family who have always been supporting me, my two sons, and very especially my wife, Gabby, for everything. Thank you, Daniel, for your beautiful words. Now we continue with the fourth prize. This goes to John Pardon. John earned his PhD from Stanford University in 2015 and is currently a, a professor at Princeton University. Next, we will hear a presentation by Professor Jakob Eliasberg, and after that, we will try to communicate with John.
It is my great pleasure and honor to present here the work of an outstanding mathematician, John Farben, the winner of 2010 MCA Prize. I am very happy and lucky to list John among my former student. John entered Stanford Graduate School already as an accomplished mathematician. His first paper was published while he was still in high school. And as an undergraduate at Princeton, he wrote seven other papers, including one in Journal of American Mathematical Society and one of in Annals, for which he received the 2012 AMS Morgan Prize for Outstanding Research in Mathematics by an undergraduate student. In that paper, John answered Gromov question, a question uh, which uh, Gromov posed in uh, 1983 about existence of flower bound, bound for knot distortion. Does the minimal knot distortion goes to infinity together with the complexity of the knot? So I recall that uh, distortion of the knot is defined uh, as this quantity is written here. So you, you just take a, uh, distance between two points of the node uh, as measured in the space divides by distance along the node and take this maximum of, of this quantity for, uh, for the pairs of the point on the node and then take infimum of all possible representation of this node in three space. Gromov proved that if you take a node that for that this distortion is actually equal to pi over two. So that means that for trivial, trivial knot, like the best possible uh, thing you can do is just take a round circle in the plane. Then and Sullivan proved that if you take a non-trivial knot, that this quantity must be at least five pi over three. John Pargan proved that there are nodes with an arbitrary large value of this distortion invariant, and in particular for uh, PQ torus node, he proved that it's bounded below by minimum of PQ divided by 160. So when PQ increases, this quantity goes to infinity. So I know that precise value of the invariant delta is unknown, even for the simplest node, the trefoil node. The best upper estimate for this node is around 7.16. One of the projects that John Pardon completely during his graduate years was a joint work with French mathematician Emmanuel Giroux. This work concerned is an equivalence between Weinstein and Lefschetz vibration formalism for a Feinstein complex manifold. So I just uh, recall that if you have a, a Stein complex manifold, so it, it has also a symplectic counterpart called Weinstein symplectic manifold. There are two ways of like presenting things. One is handle body presentation, so-called Weinstein handle body presentation. Another presenting as a Lefschetz vibration over disk. And uh, it was, was well known that uh, for any Lefschetz presentation can be made to, to be Weinstein, but uh, in opposite direction, this was a, a stated by Giroux many years ago, but unfortunately his approach encountered serious difficulty and no written proof had appeared. Several other mathematicians attempted to prove this result without little success. So I was very happy when both Emmanuel and John agreed to collaborate on this problem to, to finish this project. In a few months, they actually already had a paper with a complete proof, which required new fresh idea which John brought to this collaboration. Moreover, the new approach yielded a stronger result, which was interesting and uh, not only from symplectic point of view as what the original uh, approach by, by Giroux, but also from complex analytic perspective. An extremely large foundational project was chosen by John for his PhD dissertation. 
Let me recall that in Gromov's theory of moduli spaces of holomorphic curve in almost complex symplectic manifold, it is traditionally considered necessary to achieve transversality. Indeed, it seems that otherwise this moduli space could be as bad as arbitrary closed set, unlike the context of algebraic geometry when, where the moduli spaces are algebraic set and has at least stratified by manifold strata. It is also well known that it's not always possible to achieve transversality by just perturbing the almost complex structure. Hence, they were developed very elaborate perturbation scheme with, uh, which were supposed to satisfy a coherency condition on different strata of the moduli space. Several group of mathematicians devoted many years of their life for building foundation of the theory. So let me mention here the Koranisha structure approach by Fukaya or Otto Ono, with also contribution by Magda Verheim, uh, the poly polyfoot package of Hofer, Vysotsky, Zendel, and virtual cycle approach by Ruan Tian. Each of these approaches has its own advantages and problems. For instance, for the polyfoot approach, the author had to create all new function and analysis specially designed to handle the numerous model space problems. John Parton found a way to go around the transversality problem altogether and to work directly with unperturbed moduli spaces. This required much more advanced algebra than it was traditionally used in this context, but much less delicate analysis. In one of the follow-up papers, John himself put his new machinery to work and brilliantly demonstrated how this package could be used to build foundation of quantum homology theory. John's work is very elegant, and his new theory has been already used by several mathematicians and is gradually becoming one of the basic reference for the researchers in the theory. In his post-PhD years, John branched to several new directions. First of all, he completed a large joint pro project. They wrote three papers of more than 300 pages in total, with Shil Ganatra and Vivek Shende. So this project was devoted to the development of effective methods of computing symplectic invariant, uh, namely so-called rep Foucault categories for uh, Weinstein symplectic manifold. Their work, which is important for the homological Miller symmetry program, essentially reduces the computation of rep Foucault categories mm -hmm. to topology. Another recent direction of John concerned with group action on manifold in the theory of orbifolds at orbit spectra. John began by finding a new proof of the two-dimensional case of the Hilbert Smith problem, originally due to Montgomery Zippen. He proved that any locally compact group which admits a faithful action or connected two-dimensional manifold is a Lie group. In the follow-up paper, John resolved the long-standing problem for action on three-dimensional manifold by proving that every continuous action of a finite group on a smooth three-manifold is a uniform limit of smooth actions. His next two papers were devoted to rebuilding foundation of the theory of orbifolds and orbit spaces, in particular building homotopy category of finite orbit spectra. The orbit spectra program of John Pardon is important in particular for the study of algebraic structures associated to the moduli spaces arising in symplectic topology. John is interested in a lot of different mathematics, and his research keeps branching into new and new area of mathematics. I am confident that he will continue to surprise the mathematical world with new discoveries. Thank you. We thank Professor Jakob Eliasberg for his presentation on John, pardon, where he had lighted John's outstanding work and contributions. Unfortunately, John couldn't be here today at this event, so we will go on with the next award. The fifth and last MCA award of today goes to Dr. Alex Wright. He obtained his PhD from the University of Chicago in 2014, and he's currently an assistant professor at the University of Michigan. Now we will hear a presentation by Professor Jeremy Kahn. After that, we will communicate with Alex. All right, so this is a laudation for Alex Wright, winner of the MCA prize. Uh, 
a winner of the MCA prize for 2021. So Alex has done work in a wide variety of fields, including work I've done with him, but he's best known for his work on uh, translation surfaces in which he was part of several breakthroughs. So um, briefly speaking, a translation surface is a surface, you can think of it as a polygon where we've identified sides that are equal and parallel. And we can identify sides similarly here, there's only one way to do it, or likewise here. Or here, there's sort of more than one way to do it because this side is equal and parallel to all four of these sides, but the colors are meant to indicate that this here in blue is identified to this side here in blue and so forth. Um, and you could imagine cutting this surface, this polygon, say, along this line, taking this half and sticking it over here, and we would think of it as the same translation surface. So it's kind of polygons with identifications up to this kind of cutting and pasting. And then given any such translation surface, given such a gluing diagram, we can find the singular point. So here's this point is all these points are identified and you can count up the angles. It has to add up to two, six pi, which is two more multiples of two pi than the usual two pi. So we can say the signature is this one copy of two and the genus can be computed easily from the signature using the formula for the Euler characteristic and gauss binet for total curvature. And then similarly here, we find that there are three singular points and each one has total angle equal to six pi. So our signature is two, two, two or two cubed and the genus is four. Um, and then for any signature with the sum of these numbers even, we can define the stratum of translation surfaces with that, that signature. It'll be non-empty and it'll be a, a complex manifold where the local coordinates are given by the, um, the vectors. We just need to choose a set of sides such that those vectors like this, 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 and that are sufficient to determine the whole polygon. Uh, and that gives us local coordinates in like CN. So um, one motivation for translation services, if you have a triangle with rational angles, then you can develop it by reflections. And so you get all possible uh, triangles you're going to get up to uh, translation and you can glue these together and similarly identify opposite sides. And then any billiard path in the triangle bouncing off the walls will just be a straight line in this translation surface. And similarly in this picture. And often what we do is we just write this, this sequence of natural numbers where the convention is that we're going to multiply all of them by the same common factor like pi over seven to get the actual angles of the, the polygon. So, um, so we're interested in following these straight line flows and one way we can understand these straight line flows is by kind of renormalizing the surface using GL2R action. So we can rotate it, we can shear it, we could stretch it out, we could also kind of crush it in some direction and then we could cut and paste so we could stretch it out, cut and paste to make it kind of more compact. And um, in that way we could take a trajectory and take a long piece and kind of reduce it to studying a short piece and get some kind of theory about how these trajectories work. So we care very much about this GL2R action and it's natural even to take the closure of a GL2R orbit. So you can apply kind of GL2R to one surface and take the closure. And then this brilliant magic wand theorem of Eskin, Mizarkhani, and Mohammadi says that for any translation surface X, the um, closure of the GL2R orbit on X is locally defined by our linear equations in what's generally known as the period coordinates, but that's nothing other than the complex vectors that we talked about before. So this is really a truly brilliant and beautiful theorem, but it still leaves a big question open of what actually are these orbit closures and what can they be? 
So before the time of Alex Wright, there were uh, kind of three classes known. There were single GL2R orbits that were actually closed in the stratum. So they're topologically closed. Uh, and these are of great interest. These are generated by feed surfaces where the set of GL2R automorphisms of the surface forms a lattice in GL2R. But um, that's just one story, and we're looking for a wider story of other orbit closures. There's, of course, components of strata. Um, and then there are things kind of similar to 1 and 2, which we'll call sort of rank 1 and covering construction. So we could take a stratum and build a kind of orbit closure in a larger stratum by looking at all the covers of surfaces in the original stratum or branch covers of certain kinds. And, um, and there are kind of examples that are not closed GL2R you know, orbits, but if we think of this rank, and I won't really define this, the number of fundamentally distinct degrees of freedom, then there are examples where it's not a closed GL2R orbit, but it's still kind of rank one. So it's a kind of similar idea, so to speak. And the question is, can we get anything of rank two or higher? And so Alex Wright set out actually with Mario Mirzarkhani to try to prove that there's no higher rank kind of uh, orbit closures that are not made by a covering construction. And remarkably, well, sorry, and one kind of tool that Alex developed as a graduate student that became his dissertation in understanding these orbit closures is he made this observation that um, if you take a translation surface and it has a cylinder, so it has a region foliated, say, by horizontal curves, and over here, because B over C is irrational, these curves never come back to each other, so they're, they're not called... It's not called a cylinder. Um, then you could take the cylinder and just apply an element of GL2R to the cylinder. So we could shear the cylinder and stretch it out. You know, just take this rectangle, make it into another parallelogram, keeping this horizontal line the same. And we get this new surface, X hat, that's actually in the orbit closure of the old one. And this is kind of astonishing because... Um, the, the new surface is not in any obvious way in the GL2R orbit of the old one, but Alex was able to prove it's in the orbit closure. So here's just a formal statement of that. You can apply any matrix that preserves this kind of horizontal line and just apply that matrix just to the horizontal cylinders, assuming there are any, otherwise it's trivial, then you'll get something that's in the orbit closure of the original surface. And so Alex had hoped to use this theorem to show that there are no others, but in the course of working with Mirzarkhani, they kind of came to came across something where they said, you know, this actually should be a, a rank two orbit closure. So this new and non-trivial thing, and this culminated. There was one or two intermediate papers in this paper by Eskin, McMullen, McCamel, and Wright, where for these six quadruples of numbers, we can form a quadrilateral with the associated angles and reflect it in all possible ways to get a translation surface. And then the orbit closure of that translation surface will have rank two and not be given by any covering construction. So these are kind of completely new rank two orbit closures, and they actually give rise to infinite families of... Um, closed GL2R orbits that live inside of them. That's why I need this generic thing, because in some cases it's, it's much more special. Uh, so this is really a kind of astonishing discovery, um, and it makes it obviously much more complicated to prove you know, that there's nothing out there that's false, but there's a somewhat general negative result produced in this magnum opus by Paula Pisa and Alex Wright, it says that um, given a translation service of genus G, if its orbit closure has rank at least G plus 1 over 2, then, in fact, it's a component of a stratum or is produced from one by a simple covering construction. So that's kind of what the original kind of 
uh, motivation was, the original idea. And that's used by, that's proven, you know, 200 pages summarized in three lines, that you can take a cylinder and kind of crush it all the way down so that it degenerates and get a simpler surface and then prove this theorem by studying this kind of simpler surface and using induction on the genus. So thank you very much for your time and attention. Um, and again, my congratulations to Alex Wright. We thank Professor Kam, we thank, we thank Professor Kam for his presentation on Alex Wright's astonishing and remarkable results. And now we will introduce Alex. Hi Alex, congratulations, welcome to this ceremony. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we would like to hear some words from you, so as soon as you're ready, please go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Um, well, thank you. I'd like to start by thanking Jeremy for the, the very nice laudation. Um, and to start, I think it's important to acknowledge my thesis advisor, Alex Eskin, uh, who very much taught me how to think about mathematics mathematics and uh, positioned me in a very fruitful research area. Um, and I also want to take, thank my postdoc mentor, Mario Mirzakhani, uh, who inspired huge parts of my work and uh, was a joy to wor work with. Um, and in fact, my favorite moments in research are uh, when I learn a new idea from someone. Uh, and I'm very grateful to have the privilege of collaborating with a lot of people who have surprised me over and over again with beautiful and creative ideas and insights. Um, and I, I owe a lot to them. Uh, and I just wanna end by finally uh, thanking the MCA for this uh, award. It's an honor uh, uh, and I'm grateful for the, the recognition and the encouragement that it, it provides. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, for your words. And now we continue with this ceremony with the announcement of the Solomon Lefchet Medals. Two Solomon Lefchet Medals are given to mathematicians in recognition of their excellence in research and their contributions to the development of mathematics in a country or countries in the Americas. On this occasion, the two medals go to professors Carlos Koenig from the University of Chicago and Jose Seade from Universidad Autónoma de México. Professor Carlos Koenig is currently president of the International Mathematical Union and he's Louis Bloch Distinguished Service Professor in the Department of Mathematics at the University of Chicago. Born in Argentina, Koenig got his master and PhD degrees from the University of Chicago, where he was a student of Alberto Calderón, who was also born in Argentina. Professor Koenig is known for his outstanding work in harmonic analysis and partial differential equations, for which he was invited speaker at two ICMs and plenary speakers at the ATM of 2010. In his long and distinguished career, he has received numerous prizes and distinctions, including the Blocher Prize of the AMS. He's a fellow of the American Mathematical Society and American Mathem Academy of Arts and Sciences, and he's a member of the National Academy of Sciences of the USA. We will now introduce Carlos Koenig. Hola Carlos, bienvenido. It is a pleasure for us to receive you in this virtual ceremony, and of course, congratulations on the award. We would be very happy if you could share some words with us, so if you're ready, please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I am uh, very honored to be a recipient of this year's Solomon Lefschetz Medal. I thank warmly the Mathematical Council of the Americas and the MCA 2021 Award Subcommittee for this distinction. The Mathematical Council of the Americas plays a very important role in realizing the idea of mathematics without borders in the context of the Americas. I feel that my own mathematical career is a byproduct of this idea. I was born and raised in Buenos Aires, where I had the very good fortune of being educated by wonderful teachers that inspired in me the love of mathematics. I was very lucky to then be able to pursue my vocation at the University of Chicago, 
where I received my doctorate under the direction of Alberto Calderon, while also being taught by Anthony Zygmunt, Calderon's teacher. I am very proud to count myself as a member of the Calderon Zygmunt School of Analysis. My postdoctoral mentors, Eli Stein and Jean Faves, also played a key role in my mathematical development. During what is by now a very long professional career, but who is counting? Uh, I have been blessed to have a very large number of collaborators, postdocs, and students who have been instrumental in my development and in my research. I am in particular deeply grateful to my longtime collaborators and lifelong friends, Gustavo Ponce and Luis Vega, and to my current close collaborators, Tomás Ducaer and Frank Merle. I conclude by thanking my wife, Sarah, and my daughters, Lucy and Anna, for their love and unconditional support. Thank you all. Thank you, Carlos, for your inspiring words. We now introduce the second Solomon Leftert medalist. Professor Jose Sea de Curi is Professor Titular C at the Math Institute of Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. He's also director of Casa Matemática Oaxaca and of the Solomon Leftert International Research Laboratory of the CNRS. Born in Mexico City, he obtained his bachelor degree from Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México and his master at and PhD degrees from Oxford University in the UK. His distinguished research career has focused around real and complex singularities and holomorphic dynamical systems. He was awarded the Ferran Sunier y Balaguer Prize in 2005 and 2012 for two of his books on these subjects. And he is a member of the Mexican Academy of Science and of TWAS, the World Academy of Sciences for the Advancement of Science in Developing Countries. Unfortunately, yeah, is Jose you. here? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Jose, to this ceremony and congratulations for the award. It is a great, great pleasure for us to have you here. So, if you are ready, go ahead. Unfortunately, is Jose here? Okay. <laughs> Welcome, Jose, to this ceremony and congratulations for the award. It's okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you listen to me? Very good. Needless to say that I am very, very happy for this prize. I'm happy for various reasons. Firstly, it is, of course, a great personal satisfaction to get this important recognition to my work, and even more, because it carries the name of Solomon Lefschetz, a mathematician I much admire and who was one of the main responsible for having today top-level mathematics in Mexico. During the 1950s and 60s, he spent long periods of time in Mexico. He was a teacher of all my teachers. Mathematics in Mexico are largely indebted to Solomon Lefschetz. I finished my PhD thesis in Oxford in 1980, where I had the great fortune of working with Nigel Hitchin. And that left a deep imprint in myself. And it was while working with him that almost by accident, we came into singularity theory. Ever since I fell in love with this marvelous area of mathematics. After that, since 1980, I've been a researcher at the Maths Mathematics Institute of the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Mexico. And uh, that brings me to the second reason that makes me even happier for my personal achievements, so to say. And it is at this price, the Solomon Lefschetz Medal is also a recognition to Mexican mathematics, because without the support and collaboration of my friends, teacher, collaborators, and students, I, could, I couldn't have done much. I'm very indebted to many of them, as for instance, to Santiago Lopez de Medrano, Alberto Verkhovsky, Francisco González Acuña, Javier Gómez Montt, and many others. 
Thirdly, it is also a recognition to the area of singularity theory, a subject I learned to love during my thesis, as I said long ago, and that I have learned to love more and more by being in touch with great mathematicians and great friends like Levin Trang, Bernard Tessier, Jean-Paul Brasselet, and several others. Like our dear Sidinha, Maria Parecida Ruas, who has been for decades the head of the Singularities Group in Brazil. We, in Mexico, have gained a lot from collaborating with them in Brazil. And thanks to the work being done by people in Brazil and Mexico and other countries in this region, singularity theory is gradually emerging as one of the important research areas in Latin America with significant worldwide impact. Singularities are ubiquitous in mathematics, appearing naturally in a wide range of different areas of knowledge. They are a meeting point where many areas of mathematics and science in general come together. Their scope is vast. Their purpose is multifold. I hope this prize I am being awarded today will help to inspire young mathematicians in the Americas to pursue research in this fascinating area. Finally, I wish to dedicate this prize to the memory of my beloved wife, Teresa, who passed away last year and who upheld me always. My deepest thanks to the Mathematical Council of the Americas for the great work they are doing to enhance mathematics in our continent and worldwide. Thank you. Th thank you very much, Jose, for your nice and very emotive uh, words. Now it's time to announce the America's Prize. The America's Prize is awarded to an individual or a group in recognition of their work to enhance collaboration and to develop research that links mathematicians in several countries of the Americas. On this occasion, the America's Prize has been awarded to the Dynamical System Group of the Instituto de Matemática Pura e Aplicada, IMPA, of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The Dynamical System Group goes back to 1950s when the pioneer work of Mauricio Peugeotto, ICM 1974 invited speaker, put recently founded IMPA on the world map of mathematics. Over the years, the group was joined by such mathematicians as Wellington de Melo, Ricardo Manier, Carlos Gustavo Moreira, Enrique Pujals, who are all ICM speakers, Jacob Palis, also ICM speaker and former IMU president, Marcelo Viana, also ICM speaker and former IMU vice president, Artur Avila, ICM speaker and winner of the Fields Medal at 2014, and more recently, Luna Lomonaco and Kadim War. In addition to their mathematical contributions, the Dynamical System Group had and continues to have a prominent role in fostering collaboration within the Latin American region and between Latin America mathematicians and their colleagues around the world. In particular, it has a remarkable record in the training of young mathematicians from the neighboring countries, and several of their former graduate students are now leading, now leading figures in the mathematical communities in the region. Overall, the group handed over 150 PhD degrees to students coming from more than 20 different countries of America, Africa, Asia, and Europe. We now introduce Marcelo Viana, who will talk on behalf of the group of Dynamical System from IMPA. It is a pleasure to receive you in this virtual meeting, Marcelo. Congratulations to all the group. And if you are ready, we would love to hear some words from, from you. So please go ahead. So good evening, everyone. Can you hear me now? OK, great. Um, I, so I want to start by uh, thanking a number of people. Marcelo, we cannot see you. 
It, it, you cannot see me. Some, you cannot see me. Okay. Uh, no, okay. there, 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 no, there. Perfect. Go ahead. So, uh, good evening, everyone. I, I want to start by thanking a number of people, of course, uh, on behalf of the Dynamical Systems Group of IMPA. Uh, we are grateful to the uh, Awards Committee of MCA 2021 for having selected the group for the, the America's Prize. Uh, we are also very grateful to our colleagues and friends from various countries across the Americas who chose to nominate the group for, for the prize. Um, <clears throat> the Dynamical Systems Group has been active for uh, about a half a century. And I think for all of us who are, uh, have the honor to participate in its um, activities, uh, we feel not just a little, uh, little proud of, of that. Uh, Dynamical Systems started at IMPA in the 1950s through the work of uh, Mauricio Peixot, who passed away a couple of years ago. But the group really coalesced around the outstanding figure of Jaco Palis. It's not a coincidence that most of us are his academic descendants in way or the other. Uh, and it grew uh, initially with the uh, major contributions from Ricardo Maneu and Wellington de Mello. I myself joined in the early 90s, and then we had uh, Enrique Pujals, uh, Carlos Gustavo Moreira, um, Artur Avila joining the, uh, the group, and more recently, Kadim Moir and, and Luna Lomonaco also uh, joined uh, IMPA and joined the Dynamical Systems Group. Uh, we are uh, very grateful for this opportunity, for this prize, which brings uh, a lot of uh, <clears throat> distinction to the work that has been done and which was already mentioned here. And uh, uh, last but not least, we are uh, very happy and very um, thankful to all of, of uh, those who are attending this MCA 2021 ceremony. Thank you very much for being here. And don't forget that the, the Congress, the, mathematical, the third Mathematical Congress of the Americas will start uh, uh, the the uh, the second week uh, the, with the uh, uh, invited lectures and plenary lectures will start on the 19th of July, and I hope to see you all there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marcelo, for your words, and congratulations again to you and to the Dynamical System Group of the IMPA. It's time now to finish this moment so we thank you all for being here with us today the awardees their presenters and all of you who are following us on youtube we hope uh, that you all enjoy will enjoy the, the congress for the next two weeks so have a great conference and let's hope that we will meet personally sometime in the near future thank you everybody see you next week see you